Today we're going to go over the absolute best Amazon purchases you can make for your SCX24. Out of the box these things are not too too capable, however with a few simple mods you can make yourself a very very capable little rig. For starters you're going to want to go ahead and pick yourself up a decent set of metal wheels that will help get weight down low so it's harder to flip over. On top of that you're going to need some nice tires. Now I've done a lot of testing with these and these tires and they've both done phenomenal. These are comp pin tires from Enjura and these are little guy racing parts Swamp King tires. Both of them are amazing options for a very capable rig. Another set that I've ran and absolutely loved have been these Enjura um, crawler tires and these do really really well on rocks. They do a good job gripping. Only thing is they're a little narrow especially compared to little guy racing parts tires. Now that you got these massive tires on your little rig, you're going to want to get some more articulation in the suspension, and that's where some new shocks come in. So these are 43 millimeter shocks. These are actually mounted upside down, keeps them from binding as bad, and they work a lot better this orientation. And in my opinion, shocks are probably the absolute cheapest mod you can do to give yourself the most noticeable change in how your rig performs rocks hill climbs all those kind of things they make a huge difference once you've added weight some bigger tires and shocks you're really going to see this thing become more capable now one thing you're going to notice on all of my rigs are we're running metal high clearance links i prefer to do that a lot of people will swap in different for example you'll put gladiator control arms on something else and you'll just get different wheelbase however i just like swapping them out with amazon metal ones this one actually has a little guy racing parts, control arms, both of them very effective. They perform very similar. Can't really tell a difference. The only reason this one has the more expensive ones is we did an entire build on this little guy racing part ripper chassis and that's what came with it. So that's what we ran and I figured it would probably work best since it's all designed around itself. Next up, you're gonna wanna pick yourself up a new motor and a new servo. Factory servo is absolutely garbage. You do not want to run that. It's perfect to swap out. Honestly, it's probably the first thing I would purchase for these things is a replacement servo. On all of my rigs, I run an Emacs servo. There are much nicer options. However, this is a really good budget option. They're not very expensive. As long as you make sure you get a real one, keep that in mind. But they're a very budget friendly option and I've had zero issues with them so far. So I plan on continuing to run these into the future. As far as motors go, um, you can pick up an Enduro motor for very cheap. Little Guy Racing's part motor, very cheap. Pretty much anything is going to be a pretty big difference over the factory one. All these parts I'm going over will be linked down below in the description if you guys want to check them out. And now that you've added a ton of weight and some more power to your steering and the rig overall, you're going to notice you have quite a bit of play in your factory steering. And that's where these metal steering links come in. Huge, huge upgrade on steering. It doesn't have any flex in it like the factory one does. So it improves handling and just improves how capable your rig is because you'll be able to turn a lot easier on rocks. You're not going to have any play in your steering to take away from your turning radius. Definitely worth the upgrade. Now you could call it quits there. That will be a very capable rig. However, if you want to add a little bit more capability to these things, you can pick up some brass extensions and brass diff covers. This will add a lot of unsprung weight to your build. And what that does is essentially keeps you more stable on off camber sections, keeps all the weight down low, lowers your center of gravity, lower chance of rolling over. It's a very important factor when looking into building one of these, especially if you plan on doing any kind of hill climbs, off camber rock sections, any of that stuff. Now this will be the most expensive mod we talked about today, but it's actually gonna be metal axles. Like I was talking about previously, unsprung weight is very important, and this adds quite a bit of it. Now, you don't have to go with metal axles. You can get pretty much any aftermarket axle. The wider it is, obviously, will be more beneficial, too, because it'll be harder to roll over. You'll be more stable, more planted to the ground. However, that being said, we're running metal portal axles in this Gladiator build, and it's doing really, really well. A super capable build, and we're very, very happy with how these perform. These things are also pretty heavy, so it's adding a lot of weight. I would say the axles alone are weighing more than wheels, tires, control arms, all the kind of stuff we talked about previously. And if you go ahead and get all of those parts together, you're going to have a build that looks very similar to this. 
and performs very similar to this. The only difference between this is going to be the chassis, which honestly doesn't really do much for you performance-wise. But for a very low price, honestly, for how capable these things are, especially compared to the SCX-10s, these things can be very, very capable. I've taken this up trails that that struggled on. That being said, these things are definitely very capable when you use the right parts. Now I've gone ahead and linked all of these products down below in our Amazon storefront. If you guys want to check them out, it'll take you to a page, click SCX24, and it'll show you all of the options we just went over.